Here is how to fine tune your own AI model step by step. So what even is fine tuning? Fine tuning is adjusting a base model's weights to improve the model's performance on certain specific tasks. Thanks to fine tuning, very small AI models can outperform even the best models of today, like GPT-5. So in this video, I'll show you how to fine tune your first AI model from scratch. And it's actually easier than you think. Now, believe it or not, fine tuning models is actually a massive startup opportunity. Y Combinator themselves are actively begging founders to launch startups around fine tuned models. It's literally one of their top 20 requested categories. And that's because the problem with most AI startups is that they are easily replaceable. They don't have any new technology, which means that sooner or later, OpenAI will try to replace you. And we've seen this with the recent dev day. So creating your own fine tuned models gives you a real model. That gives you an opportunity to create a lasting business that can earn monopoly profits. Now, before you can fine tune, you need to choose a model. OpenAI recently released two new open source models, GPT OSS 120B and GPT OSS 20B. Now, what makes the GPT OSS models ideal for fine tuning is that they are both really, really good and they are small enough to run locally. So we can take GPT OSS and fine tune the weights of it to create our own powerful model for any use case you want. However, there's a problem. Most people struggle with finding high quality datasets to fine tune your model on. And without a dataset, you cannot begin fine tuning. So later in the video, I'll show you how to solve this problem. Another major benefit of fine tuning is uncensored models. This is how every single uncensored model gets created aka a model that can answer anything, even the most controversial of questions. Now, uncensored models are becoming more and more important since companies and governments seem to not stop with the levels of propaganda they put out there. And so while the average person is talking to biased LLMs, we're going to fine tune our own model with our own best interests in mind. Also, learning how to fine tune is a great way to differentiate yourself. If you are serious about AI, this is simply a must have skill. Whether that's for your personal life, your career, your business, fine tuning is the future. So now let me show you how to fine tune your own GPT model from scratch. And no, you don't have to be a programmer to do this. All right, so we're gonna be using Unslov, which is a open source library to fine tune any models. I mean, they support all kinds of different models. GPT OSS, Gemma Free N, Quen Free, Phi4, Mistral, Llama Free. So feel free to choose whatever you want but I'm gonna go with the GPT OSS 20B. So click on the free notebook. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna link the GitHub below the video. Once you click start for free, you'll get redirected to Google Collab, which is a Jupyter notebook hosted by Google, where you get free GPUs. It's literally a free graphics card to run this Python code for you, which allows us to fine tune any model, at least any open source model. So the first thing we have to do is go to the top right and click on connect. This will connect you to the runtime using one of their Tesla T4 GPUs. And boom, once you see the RAM and disk, you know that you have been connected successfully. Beautiful. All right, so let's start with the installation, which is this first block. So let's run it. This will install the necessary dependencies for Unslov and for fine tuning of this model. We can see that NumPy is one of them, Transformers is another, but the main thing is Torch, which stands for PyTorch, which is a deep learning framework from Meta. It's actually one of the most popular ways to make AI models. All right, the first cell has completed. Let's go to the next one. And here we choose which model we want to fine tune using the Unslov library. So as you can see, this one is set to GPT OSS 20B. You can also set the max sequence length or whether you want four bit quantization. But honestly, you should just leave all of these to default because the guys at Unslov know way more about fine tuning than me or you. So let's scroll back up and let's run this cell. This will begin downloading the model, which we can see right here. Since this model is pretty small, 20 billion parameters, it's only a couple of gigabytes. So this actually is not the fine tuning process yet. It's just Unslov pulling the model and optimizing our environment for faster fine tuning later on. Okay, the cell has finally finished. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so let's run the next cell. This one adds LoRa adapters, which to be honest, I don't fully understand. And so I asked Vectal what this cell does and it explained to me. And I used one of the built-in keyboard shortcuts to make the message simpler and shorter. This is just one of many reasons why you should use Vectal over ChatGPT, over perplexity or over Claude. You can create your own custom slash commands to prevent yourself from running the same prompts over and over. Plus you can use all of the latest and greatest AI models in a single app. So go to Vectal.ai and give it a shot. So we know that this cell, what it does is it adds LoRa adapters to the model. So only a smart part of it, small part of the parameters actually get fine tuned. So the next part is the reasoning effort. And to be honest, we can completely skip this. It's not needed to run it, it works without it. So let's just collapse that and go into the data prep. 
This is where having your own data set comes into place. Now, this collab already includes a default data set, which is this one, Hugging Face H4 Multilingual Thinking. And this is a reasoning data set where the chain of thought has been translated from English into four other languages, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. ABBA Disa data set is neat good, and that's why we're gonna use this one, Agent FLAN. Now, this data set was made to turn LLMs into more of agents, right? Teach them agentic behavior. So it's focused on reasoning, planning, and tool calling. So here's an example conversation where we have role user, then some content, assistant response, and other instructions from the user. And this is, I think, buying something on the internet. And we have assistant user. So this will be fine tuning the model to know how to navigate the web. So if you want to build your own version of OpenAI operator, or the OpenAI agent mode, a data set like this would be absolutely necessary. In fact, it's very likely that OpenAI use data sets like this to fine tune those models. So what we need to do in this data prep part is we need to replace this default multilingual thinking with our actual data set. So let's click on the copy button right here to copy the name. Let's switch back to Google Collab, replace this and paste in this name, and then we can run this cell. Now, the problem is that if you just run it like this, you will get an error. And that's because this data set includes multiple files. So inside of Hugging Face, you can actually see files and versions. Then if you navigate into data, you can see that there's multiple JSON-L files. We need to specify which one we want to train on. All right, so let me actually debug this with Vectl. So I paste in the whole error. Okay, so this is actually the working pattern here. We need to just load one file because this data set has a different schema than this one. So this wasted a bunch of my time, so just don't make the same mistake. Um, yeah, here is the correct way to handle that. Let's run that. And boom, we finally succeeded without errors. So yeah, let's continue with the model training. The next cell applies the Unsloth chat templates standardized shared GBT prompt, which actually I do want to find what that is. So I guess this is a Unsloth's system prompt. Okay, what standardized ShareGPT does is a data format converter from, from Unsloth that transfer conversation data sets. Okay, so this is what the ShareGPT format looks like from human say hello, from GPT hi there. This is chat ML format. Okay, so it basically just replaces human with user and assistant. Yeah, GPT models have been trained on this user assistant conversations for a while. Like since, I don't know, since GPT-1, GPT-2. So this is the convention that OpenAI uses. Okay, so this cell was super fast. Next, let's look at what the data set looks like actually. So it starts off with the system prompt. You are ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. And the system prompt ends here. So it just tells you the reasoning, the current date, knowledge cutoff, reasoning effort, and the valid channels. And then we start the user message. You are web shopping. I'll give you instructions what to do. And yeah, this is our data set. Nice. What is unique about GPT OSS is that it uses OpenAI Harmony. And this is actually a new response format from OpenAI for the GPT OSS models. This format enables the model to output multiple different channels for chain of thought and tool calling preambles along with regular responses. Interesting. So this is basically a new prompt engineering format, right? If you want me to make a video where I dive deeper into OpenAI Harmony and the implications for prompt engineering and context engineering, comment below because this has released just two months ago and somehow I haven't seen it before. Now the next cell is actually the first step of the training of the model. So this is the most exciting part. This is where the fine tuning begins. So here we have control over all of these different parameters. I'm just gonna tweak the learning rate, but everything else should be good. We do 60 steps to speed things up, okay? But yeah, if you wanna do a full run, a full training run, which means you know once you're happy with the data set, once you're happy with all the settings, you would uncomment this out and you would do a full run. Keep in mind that we're running the cheapest uh, T4 Tesla GPU. So this one is completely free. It's actually, yeah, it's the cheapest. It's the free. Google gives it for free. If you have the paid version of Google Collab, you get access to more powerful uh, GPUs. So if you go into runtime, you can click on change runtime type. And we can see that there is A100, which is like the third or fourth oldest generation of NVIDIA GPUs. It's not H100s or H200s, but it's still a very strong GPU. Like on eBay, this still goes for like $10,000 or something. Or we can use the V6 TPUs from Google. So this is, you know, their tensor processing unit, Google's own chip, basically. But these are only available on the paid Google Collab. But if you were to do a full training round, you probably should switch to a faster GPU. Otherwise, you would be sitting there for a very long time. All right, so let's run this cell. It doesn't take that much time, actually. 
But the next cell, this one is dangerous. This was causing issues during training, so I'm just gonna comment it out. Uh, I'm not sure why, but hey, just to save you guys time, so you don't have to repeat the same mistakes. Now we can probably skip some of these because this is just showing the memory stats, like which GPU we're using and how much memory we have. But this is the important part where we actually start a training run. So let's run it. And this could take anywhere from five to 15 minutes, depending how lucky you get with the GPU and the size of your data set and how many uh, steps and epochs you selected. So after it finishes running, you can see how long it took, right? So in this case, it was 10 minutes, 11 minutes basically, and what per percentage was used at its peak. But the fun part is the inference. Now, if you don't understand what inference means, this is basically when you run the model, right? Training is when you either create a model from scratch or where you fine tune a uh, existing model, which is what we did right here. Inference is what you do when you're chatting inside of Vectal, inside of ChatGPT, when you're actually chatting with the completed model, right? The model is already finished. It's no longer training. You're just using it to answer your questions. This is inference. So here in the collab, after your model finishes training, you can chat with it to see how it responds differently than the base model. Now, by the way, since this base model is super small, you can literally get it on Olama, GPT OSS. If you have a good computer, especially like a high-end MacBook or a Mac Studio, you can run the 120B. If you didn't spend at least 5K USD on your computer, you probably cannot run the 120B, but you definitely can run the 20B, right? Unless your laptop is like 20 years old, uh, then you probably can't run either. But if you want to compare how your fine-tuned version of GPT OSS responds, versus the default GPT OSS, you can just download it locally so that you can run the inference on your laptop, which is, by the way, also completely private. That's another benefit. And then you see how the default GPT OSS responds versus your fine-tuned one. Now to save it, you have two options. You can either save it locally so that you have it on your computer, or you can push, you can do model that push to hub, which saves the model on hugging face. So then you need to uncomment this line. Boom, you need to comment this one. And here you need to replace this with your Hugging Face username and the name of the model that you want. Plus with your Hugging Face secret token, which do not share that with anybody. And if you do go with the Hugging Face route, you can then use it here. But you need to replace the model name again with your Hugging Face name. So whatever you save it as, put it here. And yeah, you can either chat with it here, which is not really convenient. Or you can use a Hugging Face model to build a full stack web app, which is an entire video on its own. So if you do want to see more videos on fine tuning, on hugging face, how to build data sets for fine tuning, how to create synthetic data, make sure to subscribe. If I see a lot of people subscribing from this video, that would be a very strong signal that I should make more content like this one. With that being said, shout out to Ansloff for creating this Google Collab and for building such an amazing open source library. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I wish you a wonderful, productive week. See ya.